uh, we're replacing a clutch on a uh, NASCAR Nationwide car. Um, because here's the old one. But you can see the new one. Quartermaster, 7.25 inch. Triple disc clutch, like the best clutch money you can buy. Here's the old one. Pretty much shot. Uh, yeah, look at it. These forks are worn. Um, yeah, let's check out the rest of it. Obviously this, or the transmission input shaft, is completely gone. You can see. So that's shot. <laughs> right away. So basically I only had, you know, an 800 horsepower car. Now it's down to 500 or less. <laughs> um, these are all kind of warped. Um, definitely uneven. I guess they could be a machine, but you can see the gap there too. You're not supposed to have a gap. So that has to be fixed. Um, these ones are the same thing. They're kind of worn down. It's almost down to the bottom here. So yeah, again, I don't know. You're only allowed to wear it like 0 0.02 thou or so, something like that. Or, you know, 23,000s or whatever, something like that. Um, yeah. So this one again, same thing. It's worn. And, yeah, this is a little better, but it's still kind of warped and not in great shape. <laughs> and the last, or the middle disc, second to last disc. Um, same thing, it's really worn down to the end. Um, the spline is good. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this is still the same thing. There's so much of a, a gap here. You can see. So, overall, this is a good. I think you could still salvage this, but I don't want to risk because you can buy a, a kit to rebuild this, but. I'm not sure if it's actually salvageable. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, so I just bought a whole new one. Yeah, and this one is... Yeah, this is basically shot. And the symptoms we were having was basically the clutch was not disengaging. So, <laughs> which I have no idea why that happened. Why? Because, because the uh, slave cylinder throat bearing were in perfect condition. So, definitely no reason for it to be doing that except for the clutch. So, so whatever you think the symptoms are, it's not. You have to actually check the whole thing. So, I checked the transmission, check the, th the throat bearing. Throat bearing was good, but replaced it anyways, and it made no difference, of course. Now, this clutch, check it out. Brand new. It's at least $1,200, $1,500. But you can see the difference in that's a noticeable difference <laughs> like a measurable difference and these are i mean obviously these can be remachined i guess but i'm not sure what you'd get out of doing that um well we'll take it apart soon but yeah again these forks i'm not sure how much of a difference being new that would be but so anyways, when this, when we put this in the new car, or we put this in the nationwide, <clears throat> which is an Xfinity car, but it's a 15 year old car, 14 year old car. It's a 2009. Um, then we'll show you how to do it. But this looks, you know, obviously brand new. It's not rebuilt or it's not a rebuilt or refurbished. So at least that's what I paid for. So. It's also a different color. I don't know if that matters or anything, but this is a gold one. <clears throat> so, it's, so the first step is putting the flywheel back in, and then we'll go from there. So, And now I'm uh, 
threading. I don't really have the uh, right tool for to go in here, so I just use vice grip. As long as you thread it straight, and it should be fine. It doesn't even have any force on it. <laughs> That's it. Done. Yeah, yeah looks good. And yeah, try the bolts.
Don't use this one. Trashed. Stripped. Use this one, still good. Should fit here. Yeah, goes right in. Basically like brand new maybe not an ideal as brand new I think this one was a bit loose it's already been done it looks like it some did a crappy job I mean probably this belt housing is probably like a thousand bucks so <laughs> it's off a NASCAR nationwide car yeah it's not a street car so that's totally different so someone already buggered it up so hopefully I saved it see what happens I also didn't use a uh, flywheel removal tool or whatever it is, um, so it made it harder, so I had to kind of use a second wrench to hold the flywheel while I bolt it on. And it has to be torqued, like, a lot. I don't know the actual torque measurements, but to the point of damaging it, that's how tight I put it back on, so... Now we're putting in the uh, bell housing back together after I've uh, machined it and uh, helicoiled it, put a new thread, as you can see, brand new thread. So we'll see if this works. <laughs> and also, Is that centered in there? It doesn't look like it. It's off a bit or what? Quarters. 
Also, make sure to get measuring tape or something to measure the depth so you know exactly how um, how far the clutch alignment tool should go in. Make sure it's going to align all three clutch discs, in my case. Otherwise, you're screwed if you only align two, which is what happened with a past installer. So. Okay. See, this tool is not. You're spinning all three, right? Three twenty, isn't it? Also never used a torque wrench before, so you can hear I'm just learning that. Couldn't really figure out where it actually clicks and that. Tried different torque wrenches too, but finally got it. I think I torqued it perfectly, so hell yeah. Oh, also clutch uh, torque is about 20 foot-pounds to 22 maximum, FYI.
There we go. Okay, so now...
Well, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, next video, we'll be basically taking it for test drive and making sure that it actually worked. Make sure to like and subscribe for more. Thank you.